Welcome back. This is our third video in the COM series. And what we're doing this time by popular demand is logging into a website. So we have here a very simple website. This is called AutoBank and it gives you um, <clears throat> a balance for each user. So it requests a username and a password. Our username is going to be really anything. Every user is in the system. So we're going to type John to start. That's our user. And because John and all the other users aren't very good at making strong passwords, they just add 123 to the end of their name. So we're going to type John123. And when we do that, um, it's going to bring us to this page here, and it's going to give us our balance. And so what we want to do is we want to get this balance, this balance here from every user, or any user that we might need to. So we're going to go back, and we're going to figure out how we're going to do this using auto hotkey. So we don't want to have to type in the username manually. Here we want it to be in a script. So we're going to go and press F12. We're in Internet Explorer right now. So we press F12 and it brings up this window. This is called the developer tools. So we're going to open our page so we can see more of it. And we see that we have a form and we have some input elements. And uh, the first one stores the username, the second one the password, and the third one is a submit button. So we're going to go to the script tab and the console. Now on the console we need to figure out a way to access each of those input elements. So um, this is mostly JavaScript and well it is JavaScript but we can also use it in auto hotkey. So we're going to say document dot form and this is going to give us uh, access to the HTML form. You don't uh, really need to know how it works but if you type document.form, it gives you everything inside the first form on the page. And so then we're going to say, um, well, it gives us, how many things do we have here? OK, the length of the form array is 3. So that means we have a form 0, a form 1, and a form 2. So form 0 is going to be our input. See, we have the two inputs, and then we have the submit button. And we're going to say dot value equals something equals well what did we say here oh, we don't have anything stored there so we're going to set the value to John and when we run that we see that it's updated here so we change the value of the first field all right and now we're going to do the same thing and we're going to set the password which we think is going to be the one to John one two three that is seven characters long just uh, so you can check, when you set the password, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 characters long. And then we have one more thing, which is our button. So we want to click the button. We're going to say form, we're just going to say form dot submit, sub, submit, and then use the parentheses to call the function. And when that happens, what it's going to do is it's going to change the page here to uh, logging in. Um, and that brings us to a new page. So we've gotten this far. Um, and we also know that on our website, if we give it the wrong password, it's going to say invalid password. So now let's go over to the code. We kind of figured out how the first part of the website works. Let's go over to the code. In the previous videos, we've had this mess of code all in one file here, and it's really not that nice to look at, and it's not easy to understand. So I've moved a lot of that to this other file, which has two functions. One is called IE, and one is called wait. Um, IE gives us a new Internet Explorer. See, it returns the pointer to the web browser that we created before. Um, it just wraps it all up nicely. We can give it a site if we want to, to go to first, and we can uh, tell it if we want it to be visible or not. It defaults to false. And wait, just uh, it just holds up in the function. This is called a busy loop. It just does something until a condition is met, and that something is just waiting, ha uh, waiting one tenth of a second. So really, all we need to know is if we want to wait for a page to load, we call wait and we pass it a pointer to the web browser. So now over here, we've started our script. So we only want one instance of the script running at a time, and we want to include our functions from this file. And then we create a pointer to a web browser. So this, this line right here is the equivalent of, well, like a lot of this. And then we're going to go under our web browser and we're going to say, wait 
for it to load that our initial page, our auto bank page. And then once it does that, we're going to start running these uh, these things here. So we're going to say uh, we'll copy all of this at once. I'll fill a lot of this, but it won't. So we're going to copy this first part, which sets our username. Go to set username, and then we're going to copy the second part which will set our password. And then we're going to go to the third part, which submits the form. All right, now what we just copied and pasted is JavaScript. AutoHotKey, you have two things that you need to change right in this example here. The first one is we need to put PWB before each of these, because we don't have a variable called document. If you do not put PWB before it, just nothing will happen and you won't get an error message at all. So you won't know that you're making a mistake. One way to change that is to come up here and type hash warn, and that'll warn you about using document when you haven't set it to anything. But we're not gonna use that right now unless we run into any problems. So, so far we have this, which submits the form. All right, so when we came here, uh, what we did is we submitted the form, and then a new page loaded. So when we load a new page, um, think of this in terms of what you would do if you were actually navigating the website. So when you hit the submit button on a page, next thing that you have to do is you have to wait. You have to wait for the next page to load. So that means in our code, we have to tell it to wait. If we don't tell it to wait, it'll just assume that everything's all ready. And we're gonna say PWB. So wait for the PWB to be ready. And now we should be on our next page. Um, we don't want it to have an invalid password because that won't give us what we want. Uh, John and John123 username and password. Okay, so now we want to access this. So we have our new page here, and you see it just has the same basic HTML setup. Um, we have our header that welcomes us, and then we have these layers of divs here which are just boxes to put stuff in, in HTML. And so we have one with an ID of content, an ID of main, and an ID of balance. Uh, balance is spelled wrong. I haven't fixed it, uh, whatever. So balance is spelled wrong, but we want to access the ID of balance. So if this was a class, we wouldn't be able to use it. So we need to use the next ID above it. So if this was a class, balance was a class, main was a class, and content was an ID, we would have to use the content ID and then go down from there to get to our final uh, text. But luckily, whoever might have happened to make this website was really nice and decided to use an ID instead of a class. So we're gonna say document dot get element E L E M E N T by ID. Let me just make sure, okay. I spelled it right, and our ID is going to be balance with two L's, and we're just going to say inner text. See if that works. Okay, there we go. Another spelling mistake. Three ends. Well, now we have our text. That's how we're going to be able to access our text. And then we open this, and we're going to say this and pwb dot. And then um, there's one more mistake that I made. I remember I said there was two things we had to change about the code there. We also have to change the equals to colon equals. All right, and now and now we have our balance, and we have the inner text of it, and we're going to save that into a variable called contents. And we were going to want to eventually display that. We're going to want to share it with the user in some way. So we're going to say message box. Okay. So now we still have our pointer to the web browser here. So we're going to have to tell that we, that we want it to quit. Otherwise, we're going to have these Internet Explorers running in the background. And um, there's going to be no way to quit them unless we go to the task, uh, task manager. So we're going to do pwb.quit. But we have to uh, decide where to do it. 
So you could just say, all right, we'll just quit at the end of the script. But there's no reason to quit um, Internet Explorer after the last time you reference it. So here would be the better place. And the reason for this is, let's say we run our script and we get to the message box and it displays it and then we quit after. What if that code, what if the program is stopped before the quit is run? Well, then it'll just never quit. Like, for example, if it's on the message box and we have the little green icon down here, we can right click and hit quit and this will never be run if it's, if it's below it. So this is a safer way to do that. And now we are going to try running our code. So we're going to get rid of this, assuming it works. And there we go. So what it did is it opened the web page and it filled in the form and it hit submit and it uh, checked through the new web page for the inner text and it gave us our result. And you could change the name to something else and you'd get the result for that account. So we'll change it to Johnny and Johnny123 is the password. And it gives us Johnny's um, account balance, which is different. So using this, we could have one script that uh, maybe by a hotkey or something, you would log into this bank account and you would check your balance and it would display it in some way or send it instead of message box, we could say send input or something like that. So this is the basic idea behind it. Um, these little things here, if you're dealing with a much more complicated website, this might not work. You might have multiple forms on the website where you will need to uh, do some more experienced JavaScripting things. So look at a DOM tutorial, that's spelled D-O-M, um, which is what this document.getElementById and document.form and all that is. So look up a DOM tutorial if you need a more, um, more in-depth example with that. So that's it for this video. Um, make a request either as a comment to this or as a message or an email or something if you have an idea for another COM tutorial. Otherwise, I don't know if I will make another one unless there's a specific reason or a specific uh, kind of calm automation that you want me to do. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next, but I believe this may be the last calm video unless there's anything else that needs to be covered. So thanks for watching and watch my other videos. Thank you.